Hi, and welcome to Photo Plus X7. In this video, I'll walk you through the key stages in getting started with image adjustment, including a guide to exporting or printing your finished project. When you open Photo Plus, you'll be greeted with the Startup Assistant. From here, you can start a new image or open your own images from your hard drive so they're ready for editing. You can also open existing Photo Plus projects and sample files, launch Organizer, view the latest learning resources and tutorials, and keep up to date with breaking Serif news. Photo Plus Organizer is Serif's powerful photo manager that makes it easy to put together a stunning photo library to last a lifetime. See Photo Plus Help for more information. You don't need to create images from scratch with Photo Plus. Today, we're going to concentrate on editing some existing photos which we can quickly access from the Startup Assistant. To begin, click the Open button on the left. In the Browse My Computer pane, select All Images. Now, you need to navigate to the folder on your computer where your photos are stored. Mine are in My Pictures. Click on the photos you want to use. Hold down the control key to select multiple random files or use the shift key to select multiple adjacent photos. Then click open. All of your selected photos will open in Photo Plus and the one that you click last will be displayed in the workspace. Any other photos can be accessed from the documents tab at the bottom. OK. Let's start editing. In this example, you can see the white structure looks unsightly and takes the focus away from the subjects of the photo. We can quickly fix this by cropping it. Cropping is the electronic equivalent of cutting a photo with scissors. We'll define a crop area and then anything outside of that area will be discarded when we apply the crop. There's no need to panic though. This operation is non-destructive and you can redefine the crop area at any point. From the Tools toolbar on the left, select the Crop tool. On the Context toolbar at the top, choose a size for the crop area. This is useful if you've got a picture frame for your photo to go in and need it to be a specific size. Next, click and drag on your photo to define the crop area and release the mouse button when you've finished. To move the crop area, click inside it and drag it to its new position. To ensure perfect picture composition, you could use the rule of thirds. On the context toolbar, enable thirds grid. You'll see a grid appear over the crop area to help with picture positioning. For optimum results, aim to position at least one of the four intersection points of the grid over a key feature of your photo. Feel free to move the grid or resize it using the corner handles. When you're happy, click Apply Crop on the context toolbar. Not only will you have removed unwanted areas, but the photo composition will improve too. There may be some photos in your collection which look lopsided because the horizon isn't straight. For some photos, this can look effective. But if it doesn't work for you, you could always align your image back to horizontal. On the Tools toolbar, click the arrow next to the Crop tool to open its flyout and select the Straighten tool. We'll use this to set a new horizon. Before we start, let's think about where the new line will go. Look for a straight edge in your image that you can align to. Click where you want the new line to start and drag to the other side of the image. When you release the mouse button, the image will orient itself to the new line. Let's move on to image adjustment. Correcting the white balance adjusts off-colour photos to make them more colour accurate. We'll do this in PhotoFix, a purposefully designed studio environment for making images flawless. On the Photo Studio toolbar above your photo, click Photo Fix. Locate white balance in the Filters section on the right and from the Presets drop-down list, 
choose a preset. Selecting cloudy or shade will warm up your image and tungsten or fluorescent will cool it down. Your selection depends on the lighting condition at the time the photo was taken and will automatically adjust the temp setting on the sliders below. As you can see, my photo has a cool blue hue, so I'll choose cloudy to warm it up. Straight away, it looks much better. If required, you can fine tune the adjustment via the tint and saturation sliders. To complement your image's white balance, try adjusting settings on the lighting filter. The exposure, brightness and contrast settings work really well. When you're happy with your adjustment, click OK. Another way of applying adjustments is from the Adjustments tab to the right of the workspace. We'll look at converting an image to black and white using the Black and White Adjustment. On the tab, locate Black and White. To apply the default adjustment, simply click on its name. Alternatively, click the arrow and choose a preset. You can adjust individual colour channels using the sliders. You may have noticed that a black and white adjustment layer has been added to the Layers tab. Using adjustment layers provides a non-destructive approach and means you can experiment freely without affecting your original photo. When you've finished, remember to reselect the background layer on the tab by clicking its name. Adjusting portrait photos can also be called retouching. There are various retouch tools available in PhotoPlus and we'll look at using one of these to correct the red eye in this photo. First, for a closer view, we'll zoom in. Select the Zoom tool from the standard toolbar and drag on your photo to zoom in to the subject's eyes. From the Tools toolbar, expand the Retouch Tools flyout and select the Red Eye tool. Click and drag to draw a circular selection around the red area. Take care not to make the selection area too large as this could affect other red based areas of the photo. When you release the mouse button, the red eye will be corrected. Spots and blemishes have the habit of showing up at the most inconvenient times. Fortunately, we can digitally remove any skin imperfections from our images with ease using the Blemish Removal Tools. On the Tools toolbar, expand the Blemish Removal Tools flyout and select the Blemish Remover. On the Context toolbar, set the size of the remover. Click on the blemish to define the target area to correct and then drag to a suitable pickup area that blends nicely with the target area. The pixels will update automatically. Release the mouse button. The blemish is removed. OK, once you've finished adjusting your photos, what next? Well, you can give your images a creative touch. First, we'll explore the filter gallery, a one-stop studio where you can experiment with powerful filter effects for stunning creativity. For best practice, we recommend using filter layers for creative work. Similar to adjustment layers, filter layers allow you to apply changes without affecting the original photo. On the Layers tab, right-click the background layer and select Duplicate. Give the layer a name, I'll leave mine as it is, and click OK. Right-click the duplicated layer and click Convert to Filter Layer. This letter F indicates that the layer is now a filter layer. Let's get creative. On the Photo Studio toolbar, click Filter Gallery. In the pane on the right, there are a variety of categories. Use the Expand and Collapse buttons to view the filters inside. At the bottom is the Artistic Effects category. Click on a thumbnail to apply the effect to your image. The filter will appear in the list on the right. Adjust its settings via the sliders. When you've finished, click OK. 
your image will have taken on a fantastic creative look. You may prefer to apply effects in isolation. The Effects menu hosts a range of creative filters, perfect for a stylized finish. We'll look at softening the edges of a photo by applying a vignette. At the top of the workspace, click Effects to open the menu. The categories at the bottom correspond to those in the filter gallery, but this menu includes some additional filters which aren't available in the gallery. From the other category, click Vignette. The effect will be applied and the Vignette dialog will be displayed. Adjust the blur slider to control how much blurring is applied between the image and the vignette. You can also change the colour of the vignette. Click the colour swatch and then select a colour. Do this by selecting a point on the slider and then fine tune your colour by dragging on the colour spectrum on the left. When you've chosen your colour, click OK. Make any final tweaks if required, and then click OK to exit the vignette dialog. When you've finished editing and enhancing your photos, it's time to share them. Up to now, you will have been working on a Photo Plus project, an SPP file. To share your work, you'll need to export it to a popular image format, such as JPEG or PNG. From the File menu, at the top left of the workspace, select Export. The Export Optimizer will be displayed. For a side-by-side -side preview of different file formats, click Double or Quad at the bottom left of the dialog. Select a preview pane to work with. For a better view, zoom in using the zoom buttons at the bottom and then pan by clicking and dragging on your preview image. From the Options tab on the left, expand the Format drop-down list and choose a file format. Above each preview image, you'll see the chosen format and current size is displayed. A range of format-specific settings are displayed below. Adjust these settings and see how they affect the preview image's size and how it looks. When you're happy, Make sure the correct preview image is selected and click Export. In the Save As dialog, select a folder and enter a file name. Then click Save. A great way of showcasing your finished work is by printing your photos. There are a variety of printing options available in PhotoPlus and we'll look at some of these now. On the standard toolbar above the workspace, click Print to launch the Print Studio. First, at the top left corner of the dialog, from the Printer drop-down list, select the printer you want to use. Over on the right, select a template category from the drop-down list. If you want to print multiple photos on one page, select Contact Sheets or one of the Print Layout options. For now, I'll choose Single Images, Portrait. Several template thumbnails will be displayed. Feel free to browse these and then click on your chosen template. From the pane on the left, click on these arrows to further customise your print layouts. In the Image Options section, I'll select Fill Cell with Image. From here, you can select Rotate for Best Fit and add borders and captions. To see how your customised print options have affected any of the other images, select one from the gallery at the bottom or navigate between pages via the page arrows. Finally, click Print. Well, that's all for this quick start video. To find out more about PhotoPlus, see the Learn section of the Startup Assistant. Thanks for watching.